everybody. Welcome to Sunday Hello. Tea Book, episode 45, and happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day to all the moms out there. Hopefully, this is your Mother's Day treat, or a little... No, <laughs> no, 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 let me rephrase. Hopefully, this is an addendum to your amazing Mother's Day treat, which is already done or yet to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, so happy Mother's Day to the moms, and um, holy lipstick hairspray, and screaming, screaming guitars. It's Sunday tea book time. Mm. I like that. Lipstick hair spray, hairspray. That's a hair metal reference, I believe. Oh. All right, yes, episode 45 of Sunday Tea Book is coming at you now. Did we cancel it because it was Mother's Day? No, we no, did not. We, don't. <laughs> we just thought all the mothers would want to join, and hopefully we're right. <laughs> Igor, hello, welcome. Time signature, welcome. Lola, welcome. Josh popped in and out. He's got Mother's Day mm. obligations, and we get that. That mm. is a okay with us. Sunday Tea Book episode 45. All right, let's dive in. Hello there, I am Chris Math. <laughs> Chris Math, I am Chris Math on Instagram. Hey, Mac McMillan, Hola. ni hao y'all, ni, ni hao y'all too. And uh, ni hao all y'all. And uh, the, Amer the, Amer all the, Amer all? the Americans get it. Oh, okay. All y'all is the plural of y'all. Y'all is like one single group and all y'all is like a larger group. Oh. All right, guys, what is Good Sunday Tea Book? Welcome, episode 45. I'm going to dive in and give you a little brief of what Sunday Tea Book is if you're new here or if you're not new here and, and you forgot. Maybe you bumped your head over the week and you don't even know what Sunday Tea Book is suddenly. Sunday Tea Book is <laughs> where Jen and I... But they still remember to tune in. Yeah, they so remember to tune in, but they're like, I'm, I'm not sure what this is. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or an article that is full of great information, but is not overly well known in the West, not accessible. The translation, if it ex doesn't exist or it's a little bit dicey. Uh, and we go over it here with you uh, and discuss the translation and the proper translation. So you might think to yourself, geez, why don't you just publish the fixed one, like the, the finished product? so that we could just go to your blog and read it. Well, first, we do. You're in luck, right? The link will be down below. You can go there and uh, check out the show Don't notes. Sell speech. <laughs> right? You can, um, yeah, yeah. Like, wait, like, there's more. Yeah, yeah like right? those commercials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, there's more. No, seriously, the link is down below. This one, we do the show notes after. So give us till Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, flexible, you know, be flexible, right? And um, the show notes will be there with the finished translation. But the reason we do it live is because over the last five or six years working with Jen and, you know, when we're doing something, I'm asking a million questions. Why is it like this? Why is it like that? And uh, there's a lot of stuff that we just can't capture in that finished translation that has so, been so handy for me in my toolbox in understanding Chinese tea, understanding tea culture, Chinese tea culture, understanding Chinese culture itself. Super interesting. So Instagram folks, eventually you're gonna to need to dive over to uh, YouTube to get the full meal deal. We've got tea trivia coming. We always do a little tea trivia before we dive into the uh, article. And um, so you wanna be on YouTube to catch that because we cannot do it on Instagram. We just pop in to say hello on Instagram and mm. then we disappear. Don't worry about that. <laughs> All right. It's so fun. I'm just Take watching. it away, Jen. That's my... Ooh, talking part. I'm not used to you call my name. <laughs> uh, so today we're going to continue with the article T classification in practice and in theory and practice. So that's the kind of the origin of what we're familiar with nowadays as the six T category. Mm -hmm. uh, so by reading this kind of, uh, uh, this is uh, written by Professor Chen Chuan in the 70s and published in the 80s in a French agricultural magazine. The translation mm -hmm. is done by Michael Salt, a librarian in Cambridge. So it is very well done, like uh, in terms of the right. translation. However, there's yes. some itty bitty, some in, uh, every now and then there's some information lost or, uh, or some teachers got translated a little bit. Um, that we think it needs a little bit improvement mm. or explanation, so it's not so confusing. Yeah, some really cool mm. ones in today's example where it's just really interesting. So stay tuned for those. Mm. And uh, we will be brewing up some. Uh, do you recommend? Uh, do you remember this teapot? This is our rock teapot. So mm -hmm. we're gonna brew up some rogue. 
which we haven't had for a while. And we really look forward to it. We can even show them the real way if you want. Right. Oh, yeah. So that's where I'm supposed to jump back in and remind Instagram that we're going to. There's the. Uh, ooh. Yeah, we got. I would put a very generous amount. Generous. We're just finishing the garden, so mm. can't wait to have some. Thirsty. So we got 9.4 grams of rogue way. Instagram, you got to dive on over to uh, over to the YouTube side to get the full effect. There's Jen filling the kettle. And uh, we'll see you there with tea trivia time and Sunday tea book. So bye bye for now, and thanks for dropping in. Don't. All right, I gotta do all those weird sound effects for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, oh, there's. Oh, here we are. We look. Oh, that's good too. All right, good enough. Sorry guys, I'll be right with you. I'm just busy doing the Instagram stuff. It's really blue, huh? The camera is really blue yeah. suddenly. I don't know what happened there. Mm. Time Signature says, I liked I liked your last Frustrate the Hell Out of Phil video. <gasps> I love that title. I think we should steal That's it. Very accurate. Very accurate title for that. Um, it was really frustrating, but really fun. Um, <laughs> we had fun, even though he was frustrated and I was always feeling like, okay, he's <laughs> frustrating getting... or frustrated? Oh, frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, it was I'm... frustrating for her to watch me so close. No, because every time I thought he would get it. I really felt like you're so. I think that that game should be changed to like a tea detective. Yeah, that could be cool. If we draw down some observation and deductions, that would be a really. Yeah, kind of keep track of what's yeah. going on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, I like that. Anyways, anybody having any um, rock teas or some other tea? Yeah, let us know what you're brewing. Mm. And we'd be. Ooh, well, that's a little better. That's better. Oof. All right, guys, I fixed it. Yay for me. Well, the, uh, the good thing is on a little upright, you will see the more of a correct color. Yeah, yeah, you always have the... Sure does a little reference. There we go. Mm, this is the upper looks. Yes, cool. so I'm excited to try this Rogue Way. Uh, it's been a while, honestly, since I've had uh, Rogue Way. We've been really on a sh sort of Shui Xian kick. Patient, patient. I almost just start brewing, but I don't like it with this. Not not warm enough water yeah we gotta really let it we mm. gotta take our time mm. take our time we've got some uh amazing amazing i hope amazing trivia coming up for you i i've got a new way that i do the trivia and hopefully it ah. keeps it mixed up no 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 it's not a oh i hope i don't i don't mean to misrepresent it's all the same vibe but the way i create the question so the part that you guys don't see so everything's going to be the same we got the same magic computer calculating the scores more or less like not so accurate but good enough we're just having fun <laughs> and um uh but the but uh, the way i do it now kind of i think it keeps the questions a little bit more mixed up like a couple right. times they got really on one topic so hopefully you guys are like that for show oh lolo is drinking lolo is having some faux show Oh, cool. Fosho Fosho. Long, winter 2020. Nice. Nice. So we have the the, the in the house family joke is we uh, we call <laughs> faux show uh, faux show, like uh, <laughs> for sure. Um, anyway, I guess that didn't need explaining. Brewing up. What's time signature got going? Some lemon balm herbal tea, but I had some cold brewed poire earlier as well as some matcha. Also Ooh. cold brewed. Yummy, yummy. Nice. Yeah, pretty late for you over there. I think it's mm. pretty normal for you to be off of tea by the time you tune in we really appreciate appreciate you tuning in later in your evening and everybody else wherever you are actually let us know if you're into that um love to hear where you're from um time signatures in denmark right i think so. lots of europeans igor in spain and let us know where you're at yeah i'm gonna uh i kind of want to just take my time and have some tea before I dive into some tea trivia time. Tea trivia is coming. Do you see that uh, there's a t-shirt? Oh, me have a super sick... Uh, yeah, turtleneck. <laughs> we're really mismatched. I, I'm like super excited. We were in the garden this morning, um, just turning soil. Uh, she, I got to brag about Jen's gardening skills. So <laughs> we wouldn't have a garden at all if it wasn't for Jen. Now... Um, mostly I think due to frustration with the quality of produce available here in Ottawa um, we have started a garden been gardening for the last four or five years this year she totally notched it up she planted a bunch of seeds indoors we had no less than a half dozen 
um, plates of various, uh, you know, bok choy, uh, pea sprouts, um, mm. lettuce. We've had tons of fresh lettuce. And because it's still very cool here, the lettuce is really delicious. And it's not even June yet. Like here in Ottawa, you can't really plant till the end of May. But we've got these hoop houses going now and you've been amazing and she's got this this i try to do the rotation so i keep harvesting whenever i want very calculated rotation so um and i'm just if she says hey dig this move that dirt do this i'm happy to do that i don't like the this. hoop house was his idea which mm. i for years i have been saying she no resisted because i thought it would be really expensive my philosophy when it comes to farming it has to be cheap it has to be cheap. I'm not gonna spend a hundred. Inexpensive, okay? It's oh. quality. Quality food, inexpensive. Sorry. <laughs> AKA cheap. So. Mm hmm. Let me dial that. This time we spent like 15 bucks. Less than 15 bucks, and we got a hook house up. I was really impressed. I worked like a charm. I'm looking forward to having zucchini soon. Hopefully. Mm. Mm, I can't get it to dial in. Oh, maybe it's this one. Why? I'm just, just over the red, slightly red. You see my hand? It's like yeah. fire. Okay. All right, that's the best we can do, guys. What if I go <laughs> back to this? Well, that's crazy. Let's just leave it like that. We're pretty in the zone. We're pretty in the zone. All right, let's get some comments about the tea going here. Mm. Oh, Lolo says that I look nice today. You look really... Probably both of us. Oh. I was just kidding around. <laughs> Is it a Dan Tong Rou Gui? It's mm, a great Yen question. Chai Rou Gui. It's a Yan Cha, a mm. Wu Yi Rock Chi. Yes. Oh. First infusion. Gentle. Mineral. Mm. I was gonna say, I was gonna, when he was, when uh, Time's signature, I mean, he was talking about uh, the late and stuff, I was like, I was gonna say, maybe probably having Kale again. <laughs> kale harassment. I don't know. This <laughs> channel, this channel is known for its kale harassment. Anyway, we have some baby baby kale. We're gonna try and eat them when they're super young to see if they're any less I was a little fibrous bit fibrous and disgusting. Did, probably that I don't know. I was a little bit just encouraged. I plant a bunch of kale and mm. I know, when they're baby they still look so fibrous. Hard. They look um, thick and yes, waxy. Yes. I was a little bit mortified. I, I don't know if I wanna harvest them, but they survive. I even put them in minus, I don't even cover them. Yeah, they're tough. Not very friendly, but they survive. And they got dug up. And then we just replanted the mangled leftover root, broken leaf. Hey, squirrel Fernanda. Didn't eat that. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah, even the squirrels don't eat it. Rabbits don't eat it. Nobody eats it. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, we planted these mangled, dug up little baby kales too. You'd think they'd be sensitive. No, they're coming back. Oh, but they're, they're really they're robust. Tough. So far, they're about this tall. Yeah, they're getting there. They're getting there. They're mm. going to come and get when me. They're, I just know it. When the summer comes, it would be nice to have some salads. And stuff. All right. This tea is amazing. You're going to hear more about it. But guess what time it is? It is. Fernanda is perfect. Tea. Perfect. Trivia. Time. Oh. Yeah. She came right in the middle of the kale discussion. <laughs> All right, guys. It is tea. Trivia time. I forgot to push the button. Give me one second. I push the button. I go back and then everything's normal. Here we go, Tea Trivia Time coming at you in 25 seconds. So what is Tea Trivia Time? Tea Trivia Time is where we just have a little bit of fun. I ask you guys some questions that I made up that are just for fun. You take a guess, you put the number one through four in when you see the answer options and you hit enter and then the magic computer calculates if you got it right or not. And if you think that my answer was wrong, we can discuss it, but it's not. No, just kidding, just kidding. So it's just about having fun, no big deal. Let's get started right now. All right. Now it's stuck on starting in zero. Freaked me out, I thought it wasn't gonna work. All right, guys, here we go. 
checking everything looks good. I've got this weird connecting stuck in the middle of the screen, so just ignore that. There we go. What was the last tea festival that we, Gen T, participated in before COVID-19? All right, before you think, geez, what a depressing question. I want you to know that I put this here because I really feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Everything seems to be, I know there's a lot of talk about how bad it is, but I really think it's time to start to think about tea festivals again. So I put this question in here just to kind of get us excited and be uplifting. So I don't want it to have the opposite effect. I hope that will help. So was it one, the Montreal Tea Festival, two, the Toronto Tea Festival, three, the Coffee and Tea Philly Tea Festival, or four, the Northwest Tea Festival? It's also a great way to share a bunch of tea festivals that we think are groovy with you guys. Mm, good idea. Really smart. And bonus points are, which is which one of those four have we never been to? Ooh, don't answer now or it'll screw up the computer. <laughs> Still a couple seconds to get your answers in, folks. Get them in quick, though, because the magic computer will not take your answer if you're late and you're already late. So get your answer in. <laughs> and, oh, Ooh. yay! Way to go, guys! So you guys got a full, like, a 100% correct. Everybody got the right answer there. Way to go, guys. That is epic. I'm super proud of you. Yes, I'm just checking. Everybody dialed two in and everybody got it right. That is amazing. The one we haven't been to is the Northwest Tea Festival. Would love to go to that tea festival. Someday it will be mine. Yes, it will be mine. All right. This vintage Supreme Tea made its debut after our 28 tea trip 2018 tea trip 28 tea trip what is that all right this vintage supreme tea made its debut after our 2018 tea trip is it Zhonglang danju gushu shen puar is it lao tong shui xian is it aged gushu shen puar 1999 or is it jinjun mei all right never coffee haha <laughs> igor because of the coffee we have been to the coffee and tea philly festival mm. and the one in new york it's the same folks who organize those festivals, I think they're still going. I'm not 100% sure. It's oh. been a while since we've been there. Well, so how interesting. I totally, since COVID, I lost track of time. Same here. Same somehow. here. It's been a long time. Because they're supposed to be mm. in March. And last year, 2020, mm. they canceled. Zhenglong Danju. Lots of people guessing the Zhenglong Danju Bushu Shen Puar. I don't even know the answer. Really? Yeah. All right, guys, I'll give you a little Chinese lesson while we're going through here. Uh, Denju, single tree, gushu, ancient tree, shampoo, lao tsum, old bush. Oh my oh, gosh! Yeah. 100% you guys are not going to know that. Everybody knows everything. Awesome. A couple of late answers coming in. Too late, no more bets. No more bets. Shouldn't vintage be, mean old? No, vintage just means with a date. Oh. Mm. Oh, that's why. With a single date, not blended year oh, okay. over year. Or okay. whatever. All right, guys. Our, so the Gen T, T and Music blog post features this many playlists for your listening and sipping pleasure. That's right. We have a T and Music blog post. If you haven't seen it, I put the link down below. Check it out. It's got all sorts of different kinds of music for your tea sipping vibes. Mm. Inspired by a lot of, inspired, no, a lot of the tea mm. people, uh, contributed to the list, right? Mm -hmm. I'll throw out for Luann of yeah. uh, the Tea Cup of Life, her blog. She kind of, um, I don't know if she inspired it or we had a tea list, but she also had a tea and jazz list. It's there. So get your answers in, huh, guys? Oh yeah, I forgot to read the answers out loud. So here it is. You've got a few more seconds to get your answers in. I see somebody guessing four, uh, somebody guessing, oh, you got to put in the number of the number, not the number. I saw a number five from Zach come up. So Zach corrected himself quickly with the number two submission. Good job. Confusing question. I didn't even read the answers and I'm not going to because it's too hard to just read a string of numbers. But I do like answer three. We don't have a tea and music blog post, but I somehow put the link down below. So nobody guessed three. Way to go, guys. Tons of you guessed it. Four or five. I like that you guessed high. Everybody who guessed five, message received. I'll work on list number five ASAP. Way to go. <laughs> anyway, let us know too if you do like listening to uh, music while you brew tea. Um, mm. Let us know and we will, uh, we love that. We can roast if we want to. Yes, time signature. <laughs> Recalling the video from last week. Insider joke. Yes, insider joke. Check out uh, our social media if you want to see. Don't check out down below. I pointed down below. There's nothing down below. Check out our social media if you want to see the roasting dance. 
um, cannot put that on YouTube for copyright reasons. All right, guys, here we go. The three stages of green tea processing are one, kill green, shaking and rolling. Uh, kill green, shaking and rolling. Two, kill green, rolling and drying. Three, kill green, piling and drying. Four, shaking, rattling and rolling. Had to throw that one in. Sorry about that. Hey, Daniel D Dates, uh, welcome to the uh, welcome to the live cast. I never say live cast. Why you do say it? the show. The, you used to say welcome the to the show. show. And I think somebody else, Zach, welcome. I didn't say welcome, but you kind of snuck in here in the middle of tea trivia. Great timing. Get your answers in, folks. Just hit a number between one and four and hit enter. Take a guess. This is just for fun. No worries at all. So the three stages of green tea processing, I see lots of guesses for kill green rolling and drying. I see one guess for kill green piling and drying. Uh, and yeah, way to go guys. Almost a complete sweep. Awesome. Kill green rolling and drying. We're gonna talk about that today during uh, Sunday Tea Book in Tea Classification in Theory and Practice. So stay tuned for that. And stay tuned for, uh, was that the last question? I think that might've been the last question. I think the results are coming up. No, we got one more question coming at you. All right. How many varieties of green tea shapes are there? Ooh, Ooh, this one is a tricky one. All right. How many varieties of green tea shapes are there? Are there one, six? I love reading the numbers actually. It's so weird. Two, 12. Is it three, seven different shapes? Or is it four, three different shapes? All right, guys, get your answers in. Just take a guess. We're going to cover it today. So if you want to cheat, you can always pull up the document in the link down below. Pull it up anyway, because you're going to need it in a few minutes. And speed read the section so that you can figure out the answer. Bam. There you go. So we got Zach being bold and coming out with a one question mark, uh, which was the answer six. Uh, Daniel. Oh, good job. Daniel corrected himself going with number three. Mm -hmm. Igor is going with number three, Mac McMillan. I don't know what Kilgreen, I don't know what Kilgreen is. We will help you out with that in a moment. I don't want to do it in the middle of tea trivia because uh, I might run out of time and have to cut my answer in half. It's very confusing. Time signature, I may say Chinese, right? Not worldwide. Correct, Chinese. Or as I was going to put as for the document, look at you guys. You guys are on fire. Okay, way to go. Everybody who took a guess, I'm really proud of you. Just throw an answer out. You are all very close. There are, according to T classification and theory and practice, seven different shape styles, all right? So uh, I was gonna put that in the question according to the document, but here we go, guys. Here's how you all did. Daniel Dates, I hope mm -hmm. I'm pronouncing that right. Way to go, five right answers. Simmerjeet also five. Igor on the board with three. Yay, awesome. Igor! Fernanda also on the board with time signature. And Lolo and Zach, you're all heroes in my book. You guys rock at T Trivia. We rock at Rock Tea, and we are back, and we're diving I'm into, back. we will be diving into <laughs> Sunday Tea Book, meat and potatoes, mm. very soon. As soon as I push some more buttons. Nice. Actually, this, uh, um, I think your questions are really good, especially the later ones really tied into today's uh, content. Because we're going to talk about the yeah. green tea. That's what I was talking about in the beginning when I said I had a new format for tea trivia and made everybody think the whole thing was going to be different when it's not different whatsoever. But my question setup is a little bit more to try and make that a little bit tied in because once I did all tied in and I felt mm. like that's too much, got to be a little balance of some tied in, some mm. random. So some I hope I'm striking Some style of yours and some... Actual. What, were any of those goofy? I didn't think any were goofy. Hmm. Apparently some were goofy. <laughs> All right, what do we see up here? Uh, this is really great, guys. So, Kilgreen sounds like a crossover thrash metal band theme. <laughs> that should be a T-band. Uh, a like T-band name, for sure. <laughs> Kilgreen. <laughs> Kilgreen. Hmm. And another one could be Yautzing, Shaking. I think that's a pretty cool band name too. Shaking? Yaozing. You have to use the, the Chinese. Oolong shaking, Yaozing. Oh, somebody asked, what is Kilgreen? I think we can answer that randomly just to kind of bring them up to speed. 
I think, I think it was. that's very good. We'll save because today in today's okay, uh, okay. document, you actually mentioned that, and that's something I want to talk about. Okay, great. What is Kilgreen? Oh, I did. Yes, more. you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this tea a little bit more, though, because I wasn't able to chat about it during tea trivia time because you guys were just on fire. Holy cow, you guys rocked the tea trivia. I know, I know. Sort of like caramel notes coming up with that rock tea foundation. Mm. Minimal. I think uh, with the rock tea, uh, uh, it prefers a slower uh, drinking speed so mm. that in between every like a cup, there's lots of time to really feel the the taste. The aftertaste too. The right? aftertaste because mm. it I transforms. Totally Initially, my like I felt like it was more of that a smoky, not smoky. You know the tobacco -y and the yes, rock tea. Yes, tobacco mineral. Was yeah, the first but occasion. later on, like now, I've been like several minutes before my previous cup. It was more sweet. The caramelized, like sugary sweet, comes back in right? your mouth. Mm. Yeah, so it's really different. You transform not only on the uh, when I sip it, it's after also is quite different. <laughs> Sorry, I just read Zach's comment and it's really wonderful, really beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Zach. Zach says, I'm glad my Google suggestions suggested you guys. I'm really enjoying these videos. I think thank you. first, thank you, Zach, for those kind words. That really made me like, I couldn't help it. I couldn't contain my, mm. my little smile and, and kind of joy leaked out because uh, I'm really glad. And also kind of thank you, Google, for suggesting that to Zach. We appreciate that as well. Mm. But mostly, Zach, it was you who had to tune in and uh, I'm glad you're here too. Uh, sincerely and Daniel dates I've always wanted a heavy metal playlist to pair with tea very challenging perhaps the band Kilgreen can do it <laughs> yes and I will I have I, well the recent rock tea playlist is probably pretty close mm -hmm. I think we put quite a few uh, mm. no I went with rock uh, songs More. with the word rock in them so mm -hmm. but it does have some right. twisted sister I think uh, hearkening back to time signatures hairspray and lipstick comment <laughs> earlier Heavy metal playlist. Oh, I really oh. like a heavy metal playlist with T2. But yes. most people like more zen, jazz-ish feeling. Yeah, yeah, or zen music, like the relaxing, mm. calming. Mm. Um, and I have to classify it just because there's oh. so much different metal out there nowadays. Right, right. She's more into the sort of classic 70s, 80s metal, Maiden, mm. Sabbath, Ozzy. Mm. I don't know the genre really great well. Great taste in music, great taste in music. The Kilgreen thing is so interesting in a culture perspective. Apparently one of the reasons why the Japanese steam their green tea is to preserve the vegetable taste while the Chinese get rid of it. Mm. We're going to dive into that mm. and I think the time is now. What do you think? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So time. today's a uh, part. Uh, Wait, uh? let me introduce just a quick, I oh, said it a little bit during tea trivia, but I do want to emphasize it. First, just to get everybody on the same page. We're going to mm -hmm. dive into the real meat and potatoes of Sunday Tea Book now. Mm -hmm. um, the document we're reading, the six tea categories in theory and practice, is, uh, is a PDF you can grab. So I'm going to pop it on the screen from time to time, but I'm not going to read out from it, and we're not going to linger there maybe long enough for you guys to read the whole section. Mm -hmm. So you can grab it down below. Uh, there's a link to the PDF from the French Agricultural Society or whatever. Mm -hmm who published this, thanks to them for publishing this great resource. Um, so grab that, pull it up. We are on page uh, 338 as it's written in the document and page 11 in the Adobe uh, page numbering scheme, whatever, if you pull it up in Adobe. Section one, which starts with green tea. So we're gonna be talking all about green tea today. So your question about kill green, uh, I gotta remember who that was. Good Lord, what's the matter with my memory? Uh, I think it's a Mac. Mac McMillan? Yeah. Yes, it was Mac McMillan, yes. Yeah. Was really well placed. So just grab that document and uh, let's dive in. We've got some really cool stuff coming up in today's uh, section. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. So today is uh, all about uh, green tea uh, and types of uh, green tea. Um, in, what? My random fingers were for time signature because his comment was that Maiden is his favorite band of all time. Great taste, Jet. Hmm. So sorry about the random fingers for everybody who didn't see his okay. comment and figure out what the heck I'm doing. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh, it's okay. It's, it's really I don't know if they still do live anymore. 
Anyway, back to the tea. <laughs> uh, green tea, different types of green tea, based on different angles we look at it. It could be from the shape, it could be um, from its uh, further process, is that with flowers or is that uh, pressed? And, uh, and in general, um, green tea usually is classified based on uh, process and primarily based on pilgrim. So, let's dive in. The, in the first uh, section where it talks about uh, uh, how green tea are classified, it mentions that uh, if the yellow alkaline Alkyl, yellow alkyl alcohol, which is a uh, flavonoid, mm -hmm. uh, if are to be oxidized not at all, or blah blah blah. Mm, in the origin, it's more of a. It requires the flavonoid to be mm. uh, oxidized not at all. So uh, just feel like uh, the original more have the sense that this is one of the quality, but one of the requirements for green tea. While in this version, it kind of I feel like they kind of lose that requirement feeling in the wording of if then a high temperature must be employed to destroy. Yeah, I feel like you're bang on, and, and so we made a, a couple corrections just to the yellow alkane alcohols there, which is just kind of throughout the whole document, but I put a little, it's, it's not like it's wrong, right? It just kind of misses the emphasis. Mm. So I, over here on the side, I don't know if you guys can read it, but I put this, uh, my stab at a little, to capture the spirit of the original Chinese document, green tea requires that flavonoids not be oxidized, or only mm. slightly because it's kind of impossible, and we've covered that previously, that it's, it, you know, as soon as you pluck it, it starts, or only slightly. So that's what we mean by slightly, very slightly. Therefore, high temperature must be blah, 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 and the rest is good. Therefore, mm -hmm. high temperature must be employed to destroy the catalytic enzymes and to prevent catalytic oxidation of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we go to a very interesting uh, section, which again has a interesting twist. Why? Sorry, I gotta stop reading the okay, comments. Okay, okay, I wanna read that. Time signature is too funny. He wants me to do a cover of the Trooper, but it'll be the steeper. I feel like that's a great idea. I'm gonna take a sip. I have so many music projects <laughs> in the queue. We I feel like safety dance. No, the roasting dance was such a great accomplishment. I just wanna kind of retire. You need to that out over in just in one evening. So yeah. uh, that raised my hope for you. Okay, good. I'm glad somebody has hope. <laughs> one day, one day. It, the thing is, he has to be inspired. And the lyrics and just naturally rhymes and just goes out really easy. Otherwise, if I just whip him and say, oh, you got to do this, nothing's going to happen. Husbands know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. We know that. Um, okay, back to that. There's a little thing that is... Mm, it's those kind of tricky thing for me to really uh, say the translation is wrong or something. I feel like as the English version, I feel like it might be a little bit confusing. Is the later part it says the length of the high temperature treatment is very short, and reaction do not take place to any pronounced extent. I'm okay with the later of the sentence. The length of the high temperature treatment is short. The subject of this sentence is not what exactly is talking about. Yeah, this is a really mm. tricky one, isn't it? This part Hang on, I wanted okay. to introduce this in a certain way. I want you guys to, uh, before we kind of do the reveal, I seriously want to get your opinion. I just want you to read, mm. read this section, okay? It is true, okay, and just read it over. It is true that a high temperature may itself catalyze the oxidation of the flavonoids, okay? but the length of the high temperature treatment is very short and reactions do not take place to any pronounced effect. The effects are in any case quite different from those produced by enzyme catalysis. Mm. Read that a couple times to your, like read it over and you heard what I said and think about well, how that makes you feel about, about what's being said, right? For me, I got the message that, and, and especially if you know a little bit about green tea processing, it sounds like to me uh, that the high temperature 
of doing kilgreen can actually cause ca catalytic uh, oxidation. Let me just be, I won't say the whole, but it can mm. cause oxidation, but because it's short, they don't happen to much effect. So it seems that he's just saying you've got to be precise with the kill green or you might burn the tea or something like that. And then he says those effects, this oxidation, the, the height, the one caused by high temperature is different from those produced. Now, maybe you guys read that totally different. That's what I got. So it seemed like you can overcook during kill green, you could overcook the tea. That was my kind of initial take. Yeah. However. <laughs> However, like when I read it in English, I just, like I mentioned, I cannot pinpoint exactly what's wrong. I just feel it's twisted. It's something different. Mm -hmm. So in the Chinese, it's also not, it's, you know, how we write every now and then we have to brain fill in what it's talking about. It's a contextual. Huh? I want to pause that because that's oh. really important and it's going to go by quick. Brain fill in. Right? What, what she's, this is a really important distinction between English and Chinese writing or talking mm. even, culture, is um, the, there's more, and you correct me if I'm wrong here, because this is me, my interpretation, but there's more left for the, he's writing, not writing to people who don't know anything about tea. So he is leaving some information, that. there's some assumed knowledge in the reader here. You're not brand new to tea. Yes. You're not brand new to the farm. You're not brand new to the chemistry of tea. You're at least a little bit seasoned in both. So yes. you have to know. That's why when I read it, context. the English, like uh, how I do is read the Chinese and read the English. Mm. So when I read the Chinese version, I have no issue. I understand everything is mm. pretty clear and uh, there's no logic like anything there. Then yes. I read the English one. I realize here is in the sentence how we say it. We omit the subject here. Just say the time is short. Or or misselected the subject. Yes. I just I want think, to point out that b right. just because what you said, you read the Chinese first, and I want to emphasize you fit the target audience. So mm -hmm. T terms don't stump you. How to position the characters together. You're a native Chinese speaker, etc., etc what to infer and how to identify the subject, which are sometimes tricky, right, in a second language, are coming naturally to you. I just wanted to emphasize that. I don't want to go by that too quick because this is a mm. really key stumbling point over and over in Chinese tea is the inference is left and it's not wrong to leave those inferences mm. in Chinese. It's normal, right? But it's really sometimes tricky for a second language speaker to lock on to the right one. Right. Okay, sorry. Was, uh, no, that's <laughs> very, I think it's very helpful because if you don't have a close encounter with this language, how it works and stuff, you might not feel that. That's why mm. I often feel frustrated when I talk something, trying to share a little bit deeper thoughts with you and you couldn't fully get it. I got frustrated. Sometimes or it's even because, go the wrong direction. Yes, it's mm. because how the Chinese talking is omitted there. So in the Chinese, it didn't say exactly what is the short but it's not the high temperature it's not when kilgrim reaches high temperature it's mm -hmm. the phase when the leaves when in either the machine the walk the whatever to it reaches it goes through a phase where it's ideal for enzyme to uh, yeah think of it as warm on. you know think what, about it, it for example 30 say 30 uh degree uh, celsius is perfect for enzyme to act activate or bit really active uh, and uh, we want to kill grain at 100 degrees the leaves say at 10 degrees so when the 10 degree leaves gets the walk to all the way reach the 100 degree there is a phase it passes that 30 degree of uh, promoting the uh, activeness of enzyme but because that is very short it really doesn't do something uh, significant to the result that's what it's saying yeah that's uh, so it's not the high temperature. It's not a hundred degree that is short. So right. it doesn't do that. It's about yeah. a quick phase. Yeah, which I don't think. So now that you know that, thanks to the getting the right from the Chinese text, I really don't think that was captured here at all. So I took a stab with my fancy little arrow here to uh, kind of redo it. So this is, you know, and not saying I'm a good translator, but you know, the process of heating the T4 kilogram involves passing through a temperature that actually promotes oxidation, but it does not linger in this phase. And the effects are quite different than normal enzymatic browning.
Yeah. So it's kind of like almost like the combination with what's happening in the living a scientific or mm. ideal way while what's happening in real life. Right, right on. Right. And now when we move into the next paragraph, it is when we talk about... Just a sec, okay. I gotta say, because I feel like those are these two paragraphs that we just covered, the first one and this one. And again, the translator, Michael Solve, I have to say, Oh, right. He did a great job. Yeah. Again, we, I think we need to, I really, you would do a great job of emphasizing and I want to emphasize that this is like a really high quality translation and this is tricky stuff and also super nerdy. But, um, and the concise and uh, mm. accurate as much as he can in English is very like, uh, there's nothing I can do like that. If I yeah. need to talk, you know, I'm really worthy and long right. to explain That's right. that. That's right. So, really pro. Yeah. So I wanted to say that. And I also wanted to say, because these were so awesome, this is kind of, um, I want you guys to hit the thumbs up if you think, if you got any value from that at mm. all, right? I don't know. I don't usually do the whole YouTube hit the thumbs up, but it does help out the channel. And if you thought that was pretty cool to gain that little uh, extra detail from this text that I really think was completely lost, unfortunately, like and accidentally, um, but uh, you know, smash that thumbs up button. Oh my mm -hmm. God, I said the uh, Corey from Corey's World YouTube's phrase. <laughs> smash that, like, uh, whatever. <laughs> Cool. cool. Do you right. want to read the comments or you want to... Yeah, let's that? take a little comment break. I see lots of chat and we love that, guys. If you're having side chats mm. and whatnot, please continue. We love that. That's what it's all about. And I see that somebody uh, promoted their tea community and no, we don't mind whatsoever. Uh, tea is all about getting together and hopefully you're able to do that increasingly in the future. I know things are getting better and better. So please, by all means, chat amongst yourselves. Ask us questions. Let's go back and see what's going on with, uh, with, <laughs> oh, I saw the trooper comment again, that is so <laughs> awesome. Zach says, we always serve tea to our friends while we play Richie. Oh, cool. Richie. Japanese mahjong. Oh. Oh, cool. I know, I know that. Mmm, I've for years to play all the mahjong cards. They here. That is awesome. That's cool. That is really awesome. Oh, that's um, actually a lot of Chinese. Right. Tea houses, right, uh, and times cars were mahjong places. Those are common in China, right? Not as common here. You don't see mm, that too much. Yeah. Time signature says high temperature treatment sounds very vague. To be honest, it's not very descriptive. Mm. And again, right, he's looking at an audience who knows. Okay, I'm talking green tea, and I've been on the field. I got some experience. So again, he can takes that liberty to be a little vague. I think because it's uh, you know it's it's a tea paper, but um. We gave you some temperatures. <laughs> now you can make your own tea. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've been into tea. Hey, speaking of that, I was thinking, okay, let me know in the comment if that's something interesting. Because uh, talk, again, talk about it, like uh, even today when we talk about tea process, it's really, no matter what, it will be vague and stuff. So I was thinking once my veggie, leafy veggie have a good harvest, I'm going to do a video called something like, almost like a master formula of, of eating leafy veggie. So one hand is introduced if you have leafy veggie and you're uh, kind of uh, you know tired of a salad and want to cook it, how to do it. Super simple. On the other hand, leafy veggie is the the way to learn about mm -hmm. uh, tea process, especially not especially. It's, yes, especially <laughs> especially kill green. It's very right. important right. to look and uh, that will open up your gate to understand uh, mm. the nuance of the tea process, you know, using my veggie garden as an That's example. That's pretty cool. I Except love that. Except uh, in tea, we don't put oil and others. Right, stuff. right. But, yeah, um, we, we got to put that in uh, those other veggies because they're not as complex as tea. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the only reason. Okay. All right. Okay. So he just was saying he's got two chapters. Uh, so he's got the... Club, no, hang on. Tulsa. Yeah, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa. So he's in Oklahoma, and it looks like they've got one OKC. in Tulsa and one in Oak City. I think OKC o is oh, Oklahoma okay. City. Okay. Um, but uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, because I'm taking a guess here. But based on the geography, I'm taking a guess. I it, see it's Tulsa Eddie and Casey, Oklahoma City. There's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, yeah, man. Hope so. Um, I mean KFC. Sorry. 
And Lolo says he likes the crackling sound of the tea when the kill green is happening, the crackling inside the mm. steel pans and the wok. So uh, you would love that video then, I think, about with the veggies yeah. too. Because um, uh, I was on a conference call the other day when she threw the lunch on to do the... Remember that? And everybody on right. the conference call was like, what happened there? And it was just the veggies, <laughs> the wet veggies hitting the hot wok and the big sizzle. <laughs> Super loud in the house. And when I hear it, my, I get a little bit... My mouth starts to water. So, so Mac McMillan is is in the Tulsa area, so that's cool. Oh, so cool. maybe you can check out some um, ma, not Madrong, but uh, Richie. I don't know if I'm Richie. pronouncing it properly, but I think it was uh, R I I C H I uh, Richie. Maybe. What do you mean when you say inferences? Oh, I don't remember when we said it. I missed that one live, so I don't. Yeah. Inferences. Mm. Okay, I don't know. You gotta re-ask that question. Time signature. I can't answer. But I, I don't know what I mean because I forget what I said just a few seconds ago. That's a little bit sad, but yeah. And I already said Zach, don't be sorry. We love that Team Madron community. Yeah, Team Madron, Madron. It's all good. It's community, right? Community is great. Uh, by all means, uh, is the sound of water? Oh, it's the sound of water popping out. Yeah, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Time signature. Well, as someone who reads research papers regularly, I appreciate clarity and precision and clear definition, even in the fields where I am an expert. Yes, agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Totally. Uh, it's so confusing because they don't use a simpler language. Mm. I think we also have to remember the publication time of the paper uh, matters too. I even struggle with the English in many, many times because it's it's concise and some of the expressions Same used... Same with me with the Chinese version. Sometimes right. it feels like, a, oh, awkward word. Yeah, it's old wording. And so the language has kind of moved on a bit. Surprise, huh? Don't you feel like like 70s, 80s is pretty like a, a close to us? It right. wouldn't feel like it would have a big uh, difference yeah. in how we talk. And, and from my perspective, there's also the Cambridge versus North American English. So there's that sort of uh, cultural difference just in the two versions of English. So we've got lots on the table here. Mm. Um, and uh, high temperature process is clearly defined earlier in the paper. Kind of. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure it is either because it's more, this is more about classification. Mm and not the details of processing, but mm -hmm. there we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, all right, so uh, let's dive back in to the next section. Right. So next section is... Oh, I love so this section. What we just did is more like the opening of this, mm. uh, say, today's several paragraphs. Then in the next few different paragraphs is from each own angle. Starting mm. with the angle one is from the process one, which I like how it said is tea, uh, green tea are usually processed in three stages. Uh, elimination of a kill, uh, of a rankness, which mm. nowadays a uh, um, a very common way of saying is kill green. Then rolling and drying. Mm. Uh, first of all, I really like his translation of elimination. Of kill uh, of rankness, mm. I think it's uh, better than kill green because all the processing terms first in English is not all settled. It's a zigzag everywhere. You can hear any <laughs> meaning they're not standardized, anything. right? It can yes. be. But mm. among all, almost the only kill green is the non-English English, which right, is right. literally word by word translated by uh, the Chinese tea term. Mm. Uh, well, I I don't know about the other field. Sha but Tsing, it, right? Yeah, Sha, sha Tsing. Tsing. Kill green. Which doesn't tell much to people. However, yeah. other ones that they translated to English. I still, I'm those people, uh, I pick a side, I stand on that side. So if I want a word by word translation, right. I do that. Or if I ins uh, insist on the Chinese pinyin, I do that. Or I translate based on the meaning of this mm. base, I do that. Just. When it's Stick mixed with one match, yeah. it get people a little bit off the balance, I would say. Yeah, and it starts to be, well, you start to try and guess, well, what was the reason for not doing this one and might be done this one and maybe there was a real good reason or like you, as the mm. reader, you have to start guessing why it was like that, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I think their uh, translation of uh, elimination of rankness is pretty oh. bang on. Yeah. In terms of uh, uh, 
the so purpose of I just want to get to time signature. I'm yeah. going to get to your earlier clarification later, but uh, he says I'm not a fan of the word rankness, but mm. actually we'll explain to you why we love it. Because yes. it can... It yeah. contains that uh, mm. uh, in... Uh, why not? It captures... Okay, okay. I want to be careful of my wording because when I say why we do this kill green is to that but it's not quite true right mm -hmm. uh, and I want to echo back to your comment about why uh, Chinese don't want this while the Japanese wants to preserve this so mm -hmm. the purpose of doing this all times is just when we cook stuff like when we cook something it makes that more delicious so all times mm -hmm. teas are all cooked right however way it is then and that's why no matter is Japanese tea or Chinese tea because Japanese tea comes from Chinese tea the process and the seeds mm, everything mm. but that's like a thousand twelve hundred years ago when they were like that that's why a Japanese yeah. is more like a preserve the tradition and really preserve mm. a lot eventually develop into their tasting habits of matching mm -hmm. their situation which they love that well in China uh, we develop in a certain way where when we do this cooking, cooking, however it is, this cooking process, we want to get rid of the rankness in veggies, in green stuff. Mm. The ting the the flavor. Mm. So I cannot say why we do that is because that. I think this statement is slightly wrong. Just say nowadays when we insist on doing that is for the regular and to have a time purpose like to have yeah, a time frame yeah. in the reason to when we talk about tasting green teas why we care about uh, doing kill green uh, doing that uh, properly is because of uh, we right. wanted a certain taste but mm. it's not the beginning right uh, like a thousand years ago when people were struggling with food they they didn't say oh let's do that so uh, it has a tasting green tea wasn't quite like that. Right, and I, I, Time Signature says that the rankness is subjective, but I think, uh, mm. and to evaluate it, I'm still not sure I can agree with that because, well, it's, it has, and maybe I agree that it has that sound, mm -hmm. right? It sounds, oh, you don't like it. It's mm -hmm. just a, it's a subjective term. Yes, it does have that, you're right. Mm -hmm. However, it also has the, um, it also, that because it's picked up in taste, I think is why it's labeled like that. But that taste is actually, and it's not a subjective taste, that taste does tell you something about the quality of the tea. If there's tsingso, you can be sure your tea, and you can correct me if I'm about stepping out of line here, mm -hmm. it's not going to last as long. That is the thing that will oxidize, and you want to get rid of that in green tea, right? Um, so, and I've Anyway, so I think it... I think it's uh, something, mm. how should I say it? Like we always say, in terms of taste, what taste you prefer or something, does everybody have to love expensive teas or stuff? No, not at all. And everybody, we are all entitled to have our own opinion, mm. popular or not, mm. like it or not. And it's totally fine, right? But in certain, there are certain standards when it comes to, because every industry needs a standard otherwise yep. it's just a chaos I don't mm. uh, it's just uh, from the industry level that's what we think and uh, or we can also change the translation elimination of the chin smell mm -hmm. that's quite neutral but yeah. just wanted to say in Chinese true elimination of the green smell green smell but that, that would need some definition too. just though. to say from the Chinese background and our tasting um, Genre, uh, you know, that's an undesired, undesired smell, mm -hmm. and again, each step would affect its quality in later ones. It's not just about uh, do I have this taste or not. It's what this taste stays here means other things as well. It's pretty uh, a complicated tasting uh, process. Mm. But definitely, yeah. I think some people love that, uh, like uh, Darjeeling has a strong of that because of the hard weather. Mm. And uh, uh, it's totally fine to people's like, and just like right. what we say, like on our channel, we share uh, Chinese tea perspective. All I do is sharing with you the Chinese perspective on tea so that 
It's not to say this is what you have to believe. This is what you right, have right, to right. do. This right. is what. It's just when you love Chinese tea or you go to China to buy tea, yes, you are yeah. buying under our criteria, under our uh, standards. Right, right. That's why I see a lot of uh, Westerners and stuff. They go to China, buy tea. They buy the tea that they love. Totally fine, but. If you know a bit about what's our standard, you could buy that for five dollars, not a hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, just uh, you know to mm. know what's happening in the Chinese tea industry, and right. you can always have different preferences or ideas. So there were a couple of great suggestions out there. Simmerjeet said maybe stabilizing the leaf. I really liked yours of eliminating the green. That way there's no sort of uh, value-y sounding word like rankness. Okay, let's move on to the next Hang thing. Hang on, I just, there's really okay, one okay. good one and we, because we've been talking about it, but one comment came in that was really related to what it, that flavor, which is somebody, Lolo said to get rid of the algae or grassy aroma. But I wanted to just say like, Understanding what we mean by that green flavor also takes some experience. I don't mm. think algae quite fits there. That's the umami side. We love that. Mm. The grassy one is more ripe, but still not quite. Still not quite there. Anyways, yeah. if any of you guys well, are interested... I think interested, we should do a video on that. That's an interesting... No, we don't do video. Sorry. It's too hard to... When it's I true. do video, taste. I want to make a structure. I yeah. want to like a step by step. And it's but a taste. It's a you got to taste it. Join us for the tea trip. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. in the factory, we're gonna do a lot of tastings, mm -hmm. and you are gonna taste the tea after pilgrim. What does that taste like? Fresh yes. leaf. Yes. What does that? You really yeah. need that. I. It's very hard for me to just yeah. talk that here. Various stages. And I don't mean to shut you guys down because I wanna. Sometimes I know this myself too. What? Oh, sorry. And sometimes I get mm. really uh, into this talk, but. Mm. I didn't bring my key point up yet is those stages, that three stages, right? Uh, however you call that, say Kilgrim, because it's the most common way we say it now. Kilgrim, rolling and drying. You feel like, oh, that tell you a lot. I want to do a comparison or mm. metaphor to tell you what are those means. Means how, if you want to you know how to make green tea, okay? Vis-a-vis -vis how to cook. So three stages, kill green, rolling, and dry it. Mm. Prepare food, cook it, serve it. That's what it means, how empty those are to right, right. people. You really don't know how That's you prepare one. that, how you cook it, right. how you serve it. It's very bad. And at a certain point, That's a killer misleading. metaphor. That's really helpful, I think, to understand just how general those terms are. Yes, mm. yes. It's very... Uh, what misleading wasn't because of the word is it just because those words give people the sense that oh I know green tea is the process mm -hmm. I even had a, a years ago I even had an editor because I think based on his wording he know he saw how Longjing was processed dragon well was processed mm -hmm. and in his he insists on correct me on the some technical part of um, right uh, what was the tea I forgot the big leaf tea, the big leaf green tea. Uh, Lumen Gua Pian? No, 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 oh, the super big. Oh, Ho Kui. Oh, Ho Kui, Ho Kui. He has mm. to correct me on Ho Kui's technique. So I just want to point out, Longjing has a Longjing's process. Mm. Ho Kui has Ho Kui's process. Okay. <laughs> Both are prepared, cooked and served. <laughs> yes. Right, to use the food You, you can say they all prepared in kill green, rolling and drying, mm. but they're widely different, mm -hmm. right? Longjing from in the go in the walk, say handmade one to out of the walk, all the steps are done in that one step. Mm -hmm. Similar with uh, Bi Luo Chun, but they're different how mm -hmm. they were handled in the walk. Oh, yeah. Other teas are different. Some are um, like kill green, rolling, kill green, rolling, back and forth. Right. Like in terms of how it's detailed down is really different. That, uh, mm -hmm. this green tea thing is, uh, same with a lot of tea process uh, stages. It's uh, vague enough, you really know something, but not knowing something. Mm. Uh, just wanna uh, remind you, don't, right. don't be too obsessed with this. Like rolling, uh, people are like, green tea rolling. I thought only like, uh, you know, has rolling. 
It is not right. right? The, the, you, we can call that rolling. Uh, rolling. We can also call that shaping. Mm -hmm. Where some people might think that it's a pressing. So just want to point that out. Yeah. Oh, I need to do something. I talk a lot. Yeah, good one. And I'll jump back in to the comments. Oh, we're caught no up. No comment. We're caught up. <laughs> I talk too up. much. I'll give you a quick sip though. No, it's nobody, really good. I nobody think... wants to comment anymore because I shut everybody down. No, no, I don't think that's it at all. I think, uh, but I, I think the, um, I, that's the first time you used that metaphor for, of cooking with something like the, for example, the, the process, the, the green tea process, kill green rolling drying and prepare food cook food, mm. serve food. I think that's a really profound, profoundly helpful to understand just how much information, it gives you a context for how much information is contained in those uh, notes. Mm. Um, and also like a dry, honestly, every step of making, China, uh, making tea is dry. Yeah. So, you know, the last step and stuff. So, um, personally, I like to keep the Chinese term for even for English, just use pinyin because mm. people see that I don't know what that means, so I can explain. It then needs explanation. Yes, yeah. to so to really uh, to fill in the detail. But if you say drying, people say, "Oh, I know that. I know what drying means." Right. But right. they might just close there. So, right. anyways, um, I really appreciate that. Uh, I didn't. I don't know. Maybe it's too rude. Uh, I didn't want to shut you down. Just like that, I just want to point out at a certain point we uh, we can all think about what we want to express this, but the important things, I think the real important things is those are not very important. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, that's, oh, that's right, in terms stage. of loving. So did, we didn't even answer <laughs> Mac McMillan, what is Kilgreen? <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, so the it, short one is it's using heat to get rid of that green flavor, to get rid of Basically the Basically just a high heat. High heat to get rid of the green flavor. Stir fry without the mm. oil. That's yeah, it's almost, exactly. Almost like that, like a stir fry without oil. You know, when the and the veggie turns bright green, typically mm -hmm. when you do that, as long as you don't overdo it. So there's another interesting section though where I want to kind of come back to the book as well and point this out because this was really interesting. This little block here, and um, because it's. Um, what is it? The first of the the first of the chief distinctive features in the processing of green oh uh, green teas are right. So the elimination of rankness, so the first of these, the elimination of rankness is the chief distinctive feature in the processing of green tea. Uh-huh. And is not carried out in the normal way. So this was I if you read that and then you read on for green tea, rankness, blah blah blah, you'll you I think you'll find you'll be like, what are they what's not the normal way? Which one's not normal? Is it the dry? Is it the humid? Mm. Um, so this was, so then I ha we got into it to say, hey, what's, what is this sentence about? It's a wrong translation. I think because mm. how they group the word, yeah. how he grouped the word, he kind of... Chatsi. Anyway, yes, Chatsi. Uh, all it says in Chinese is uh, according to the difference of the popular ways mm. of pilgrim. Mm. Oh, in which way I still I'm okay with Kilgrim because it's so doesn't it's, tell much, so I can still explain. Right, yeah, it still <laughs> permeates the uh, mm. permeates, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So normal way was so actually, actually the popular way. Yeah. Mm. And the only other thing here was dry and humid are more the more common terms now are like pan fry and steam. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, I'll let you take over again into the shape section. Uh, if that's okay. where we are. Yes, Did we yes. miss anything? No, I don't think we miss anything. And after that, there's nothing overly, uh, there's nothing actually uh, that I was like, uh, that, that I out, didn't right? agree with. I think the whole translation was really good. I just want right. to point out uh, some of the examples might not be very, uh, popular known nowadays, like right. the fist shaped uh, gong xi and the uh, mm. uh, folded thick uh, xi chun, those are famous teas. 
hundreds of years ago. Right. Those are early times Chinese mm. exporting, um, and not very early time, but ex major exporting teas. Right. Like in the, we're talking about 18th century or something. Now it's a less of those slightly less um, popular among people because as exporting teas is usually lower grade. Right. And then uh, there one is, is from Anhui-ish place and one is Gongxi. from Zhe, uh, Zhejiang, yes. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I was a bit, so mm -hmm. it, there's four varieties of the scented tea that are called out as well, but I didn't know what Chloranthus inconspicuous swartz was. So, <laughs> and I couldn't find much information about it other than it's another type of Asian flower. Maybe it's colloquially known as Chloranthus. So let us know if you've mm -hmm. heard of this flower. Um, Chloranthus or Chloranthus inconspicuous swartz. If you're thinking, was swartz the guy who named it? Yes, he was. I've stumbled across that <laughs> in my. And, um, and variegated in this context, I don't mm -hmm. think we use it like this much anymore. I'm not sure, but I think it just means and varied. So jasmine, magnolia, chloranthus, and kind of other, the catch all um, slot is what I think very variegated is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it. That basically covers it. Four square was used for a pressing shape. Four square is a literal translation of cubed. So it's just a cube in English. That would have been probably a better translation. And that covers uh, this week's section. So next week, I don't know if you peeked ahead a moment ago, but brown, brown teas, AKA yellow tea are coming up next week. Another uh, amazing great tea category. Um, and let's see, uh, have a quick check the comments. I don't want to miss anything mm -hmm. super fun and important. Zach, I love your annotating, by the way. Thank you, Zach. I uh, appreciate it. And I hope you guys can read it. I know it's pretty small. I have to use a little mini font to fit in the, uh, in the margins, but hopefully it's legible out there. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> how hard is it to make tea at home and then drink? Uh, pretty hard. But uh, you could always do it. It can be done. I'm the, I think the You're opposite. the opposite? Yeah, I think it Depends really... Depends on your standards. I have high standards. <laughs> uh, what is making tea? Simply speaking, drying tea. So any way you dry it... Let me qualify my answer. I'm okay. in Canada, so it's super hard oh, here. Oh, okay, okay. If you're climbing, Sit. if you can grow that, yes. Uh, but other than that, it's very simple. Mm. But when it comes to... Is it delicious? Actually, tea is very much like cooking. Uh, mm. Why? Mm. Uh, That's a great point. We love, we all love our mom's cook. Why? That's the most familiar one. And I, my family has been cooking for centuries. Do you hear that a lot in tea? <laughs> oh, my family has been pretty same. Okay, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean they're Michelin star. But in terms of <laughs> the, well, it's just, the people go to China and that's what farmers say. Right, right. Uh, why? I can, and it's true. And you can tell I'm uh, pretty opinionated, opinionated mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in terms about uh, standard or there's a certain rules we follow. Because be, when it's really chaotic or everybody only remember that we can love what we want, then they go to China and it's exotic and the farmers are wearing those kind of clothes telling the story. My family has been making that for a thousand years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, people just buy that at a price that we uh, normally could have paid five dollars more for for the whole batch while they paid a hundred dollars. It just it gets the market very uh, chaotic and in the end nobody is benefiting custom uh, like the uh, consumers are suffering from that um, tea vendors are hard because everybody thinks I should get that directly from the farmers farmers don't spend time on producing good teas they're marketers <laughs> they, they think to tell one two good stories they can sell the tea why do I work hard uh, that's why I uh, I always insist by people who go to China to source tea, learn more about tea and stuff. And that's why I want to share all those uh, Chinese tea documents and stuff. And I think the uh, time signature and then I said, no, I'm not criticizing on Chinese mm. standards. I totally expect, uh, accept and respect those. I think it's more the use of rentance as a term in an academic paper. Mm. Uh, first, uh, I totally understand. It's just a discussion. There's no offense or anything. Yeah, not taken at all. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Second, uh, I think 
even when people criticize it, that's also fine. After you read necessary, or necessary, right? it's mm -hmm. very necessary. I never think it's bad. It's when people who don't even read or don't even learn that start to criticize. Mm -hmm. That's something ridiculous. But right, right. But if you <laughs> read and learn and see this and you have your opinion and criticizing, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, again, uh, I just wanted to say like I'm just sharing the. Chinese perspective for that. Right, right. You don't have to agree with this perspective, right. especially when you drink tea, uh, you know, at home or stuff like that. Even when you're a vendor, you don't have to agree. Just noting that when you go to China to buy tea, that's the standard you're paying for. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's yes. Yeah, that's where and the, the value reason, comes in. Yeah, yeah, and the reason I like the redness is because it capture the tone in Chinese. Right. The Chinese when we say kill green, right. uh, qing, all, those, all those words when it comes to tea process with the qing word, it usually qing has a negative thing, a negative mm, thing. Mm. Now we want to get rid of that mm, flavor. Mm, mm. Uh, there's just that. It, do you like that or not? It's totally like, you know, yeah. personal stuff. And there were some questions about uh, what is the green flavor. I want to give them a, one mini tip that helped me is eat a whole bunch of raw green veggies and look for that common thing. Uh, peas are really good, raw peas, if you can stomach them. I don't know, some people don't like them. I don't hate them. Raw peas, have a little bite of a bunch of raw green veggie and look for the there's common. Simi there's yeah. a similar thing, even between like a, a, a raw bok choy, a raw pea, which are totally different flavors, but look for that similarity and you'll start to, I think you'll get what Tsing is. Um, that, what, that helped me, um, even though I got in trouble each time I take a little bite of the raw one. Ew, gross. Where can we grab the book, Zach asks. So the document that we throw up on the screen every mm -hmm. now and then is linked down below. So uh, check that out. Um, uh, it is down there, so you can grab that. You can download it so you have it every week ready to go. It's always in the de description down below. As long as we're looking at this, the six T categories in theory and practice, it will be there down below in the link. Mm. All right. Okay. So that was uh, exciting. Um, I just love this section. It was so interesting, so much cool stuff going on. I'm really excited about uh, going through all the tea types. It's going to be really interesting. So uh, do join us next week. Um, we will be back with more tea classification and theory and practice, more Sunday tea book, more mm -hmm. tea trivia. If and I really enjoy this, uh, just want to point out, I really enjoy yeah. this kind of a discussion uh, with you guys. Uh, open up my... Um, brain open up my mind yeah i think it was <laughs> one of brain. the like they've all been really fun don't get me mm, wrong we've mm. done 45 of them we've had some really great times mm. this was a really fun one and i think mm. that is what it's all about um don't be uh don't be afraid to offend don't be afraid to throw out your questions your opinions your thoughts it's really great it's really it's why it's precisely why we're here mm. it is the whole value it's why we don't just publish mm -hmm. the finished translation keep it up this was a super fun episode um, really great to hang out with you guys again. Thank you all for joining us. And, um, and yeah, I just noticed Mac McMillan is still trying to find China tea. So I wish you luck <laughs> in your quest. It has been tricky. A couple people have found it. It's really right. hard to find. And, um, Zach, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for all your props throughout the whole yeah. show. Yeah. I'm super glad you were here. I'm super glad you were all here. Yeah, we thank got the you whole the tribe came back. Uh, I want to just uh, say time signature, thank you, uh, Mac McMillan, Absolutely. thanks, Lolo, Fernanda, did I miss anybody? Even Joss jumped in. I'm going to go back and dig to make sure I didn't miss anybody. I think I got you all, and all of you who come at other times, or if you're out there watching in the recorded version, thank you for joining too. Until next time, keep steeping. Keep steeping.